Thank you for joining us on the Winning at Selling podcast. I'm Bill Hellcamp of Reach Development Systems, and with me is Professor Scott Plum of the Minnesota Sales Institute. Outstanding leaders are outstanding listeners, and when you're in sales, you're a leader. As we interact with prospects, clients, customers, and colleagues, successful relationships start with listening. And if you don't listen, you don't know what they're talking about, so you don't know what you're talking about. So let's talk about it. And today, it is listening as Bill and I welcome award-winning listener and speaker, Dr. Manny Style, to discuss effective listening on episode 539 of the Winning at Selling podcast. Well, I'm excited to have uh, Manny on the show today, and we just want to reiterate for our uh, regular listeners Normally, we would do book club at this time, but when we have guests now, we've decided to just give them the whole time and not spend our 10 minutes on the book club. Now, next week, we will pick that up again, and we are in The Theory of Accountability, Part 2, Chapters 6, 7, 8, and 9. I don't know if we can do all those. Wow, we'll do at least 6, on. 7, and 8. Um, anyway, so The Theory of Accountability, if you haven't picked it up, pick it up. Scott, turn it over to you. It's a great book, yeah. So, Dr. Lyman... Manny Style, CSP, CLP, and CPAE is an internationally known as the ambassador of listening and a speaker worth listening to. Dr. Style is CEO of the, and chairman of the International Listening Leadership Institute, president of Communication Development Incorporated, and founding partner of the Master Alliance. He is also the co-author of Listening Leaders, the 10 Golden Rules to Listen, Lead, and Succeed. And for more than 58 years, Dr. Manny Style has helped millions of individuals and numerous organizations throughout 25 countries positively affect their performance, productivity, profitability, and pleasure through enhanced listening and leadership. On a personal note, when I joined the National Speakers Association on 12-12-12, December 12th, 2012, Manny was the first person to call me and welcome me to the chapter. So since then, we have served together on boards and have many overlapping memberships in different organizations. He is the master of listening, and I'm so grateful to have this time together and for our listeners to learn from your experience. Welcome, Manny. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. Great to have you on the show. Going back to our book, Manny, I think you know this author, Sam Silverstein, pretty well, don't you? I know Sam real well. Uh, in fact, uh, our book club in the Optimist Club, we just uh, had... Uh, the theory of accountability, and I called up Sam and said, uh, "Will you plug into our book club?" And uh, he did for a half an hour. He's a, he's a great wow. guy. So that's amazing. So we're talking about accountability with a civic organization, the Optimist Club, which are not salespeople by any means, and the theory of accountability still works in their world too. So that, that's a great um, transition from a business to more of a lifestyle. It sounds like. Well, you know, the, the, the accountability fits every corner of the world. And as we'll talk about listening today, accountability is uh, front and center there as well. So getting into listening, and I think, you know, Bill and I have talked about active listening a few times on the show, and I, I believe it's the most important step of the sales process because you need to be able to build trust and rapport in order to, to get honest answers to questions. And if you don't have the trust and rapport, and the best technique through trust and rapport is active listening, and really finding out the intent behind the content. And once you are able to establish the listening and the rapport, you're able to have honest answers. So let's get started with understanding some of the current behavior in people in conversation. What are the problems that you see that inspired you to write the book and really dedicate your entire career to listening? Well, I had the great fortune of uh, studying with and working for and uh, uh, succeeding in the father of the field of listening, Dr. Ralph Nichols, back in the 1960s. And uh, it's, uh, it, it is so obvious that listening is the predominant thing we do. We haven't been trained to do it. We don't do it particularly well. When we don't do it well, we pay the price. I have a little uh, catchphrase that simply says, listening pays in many ways. And by the way, uh, listening pays in many ways that cuts across all fields, uh, 
certainly sales, but management, leadership, family, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, actually, uh, I've written uh, five books on this. I'm working on three more at the moment. Uh, but the first book uh, was a book for a handbook for science uh, scientists and engineers. It was called Listening It Can Change Your Life. Uh, followed up with another book entitled Effective Listening Key to Your Success and, and other things. Uh, but the listening leaders, the 10 golden rules to listen, lead, and succeed really encompasses uh, all of the key components of the process of listening, the challenges of listening, the payoff of listening, no matter what uh, field or area we're talking about. That's how I got started uh, back in the 1960s. As you know, uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't, uh, Bill, you wouldn't know this. Uh, I taught for 20 years at uh, six years at McAllister, 14 years at University of Minnesota. And uh, we had a whole training process, develop developmental process, so that people, uh, first of all, start with uh, a pyramid. Think of a pyramid. I call it the ask model. The lower left corner is attitude. The lower right corner is knowledge. And the capstone at the top of the pyramid is S for skills. And uh, what we know very simply is that you can have all the, the uh, uh, attitudes in the world, but have no knowledge. Uh, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but not have a good attitude. But the attitude and the knowledge provide the ground plate to build skills upon. So all three of the elements in the ass model are critical and it fits all arenas. So I'm interested in, uh, in your college experience. One of my challenges I had with college and I still do with my kids all going through it. They seem to focus so much on knowledge and they don't focus on that skills area. They don't train, they just educate. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you find it to be a someone who was focused on training and trying to get people to have better skills rather than just know what to do, but to do what they should do. I'm interested in application. The bottom line application, what do people do with what they know? Uh, at McAllister, I was director of the uh, debate and forensic program. And uh, I had the great fortune of having very smart uh, kids who could talk, but more important, they could carefully listen the key to the debate, of course, is uh, listening carefully to the people you're debating so that you know where they're coming from so you can respond appropriately. Uh, we were very successful at McAllister in the debate and forensic program. I went the, the, uh, from there to uh, the University of Minnesota. I was chairman of the speech communication division with a primary focus on listening, speech, persuasion, organizational, managerial communication, and so forth. And uh, you're absolutely right. You can fill people's brains with all kinds of information and knowledge. But ultimately, the question becomes, what do people do with it? Application. Application is the key. And by the way, at the university, we had a laboratory where we would uh, give the uh, students an opportunity to go in and listen to a lot of things and be tested on how well they listened and uh, how well they could apply the knowledge. Uh, but knowledge is critical. Uh, attitude is critical. That's the uh, baseline for building the skills. And uh, without the attitude and knowledge, uh, the skills we find uh, don't don't get played out well. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you can have all the attitude, right attitude and knowledge in the world and not develop the skills. You're absolutely right. So I think about some of the salespeople that have worked for sales managers and thinking about the pyramid, it seems like they've they've come across some great sales managers that maybe don't have the knowledge or don't have the skill or don't have the attitude. And, and those three areas are so critical. And uh, it's a great foundation, I think, to any relationship because listening is about building relationships um like you've said manny and um i think this is something that really cuts through a lot of the distraction in today's 
sales training development arena is we need to be able to think about a foundation to have those conversations and to be able to interact and engage with prospects. One of the also formulas that you have is an S I E R. Could, could you explain what that model is? You'll, you'll discover that I like pyramids for some reason, because <laughs> yeah. uh, pyramids you, you are... never, you, you weren't around when they were built, but you, you, you have seen <laughs> pictures. Well, no, although I, I watch the history channel. So I, uh, uh, I've learned a lot about pyramids, but um, the, the it's what I call the style SEER model, S-I-E-R. So if you picture a, a pyramid, uh, the foundation plate is S, that's for sensing. The I, next level up, is for interpretation. The next level up is E for evaluation. And the next level up is R for responding. So if you look at the S-I-E-R, sensing, interpreting, evaluating, and responding, you'll notice that that's in an ascending order. And the most critical first stage of listening is the sensing stage. In essence, simply, you know, a lot of people say, did you hear me? But the question is, did you uh, get the full message of the other party? And you know, and I know that, uh, in the world of sales, sales management and leadership, uh, a lot of people are very, very quick to get up to uh, the higher levels of the SIER model, and they never fully sense what the other individual is saying. The other challenge, as we know, you know, is that a lot of people in sales are too uh, quick uh, because they're busy talking. I have a little concept called WAIT, W-A-I-T. And WAIT stands very simply for why am I talking? <laughs> That's good. And, 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 the, and the smart uh, people, whether it be in sales or leadership or management, whatever, uh, we sometimes get carried away and we talk too much. My late wife had a very lovely little system. When I would, when she would find me talking too much, she would just kind of nudge me a little bit and smile mm. and say, wait. <laughs> 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 and, and, and we both knew what that meant. Wait, right. why right. am I talking? I love that. Uh, so uh, people who are in management leadership areas, uh, one of the great things that they can uh, yeah, introduce and uh, remind their people is, wait, why am I talking? I was on an airplane a while back and I was talking to a guy next to me and uh, I asked him a, a simple question. Uh, he was a uh, president of a, of a company and I said, uh, have you had any recent challenges in the area of listening? And then I reminded myself of wait. And he went on and uh, his eyes went, <laughs> eyebrows went out. I said, oh, let me tell you, let me tell you. And he told me how they had lost a million dollars worth of business that they should have won hands down. And, uh, and I continually reminded myself, wait, <laughs> mm -hmm. he'll, he'll sell himself uh, because he's got a problem. And uh, once you understand the problem, then you can get to solutions and so forth. But uh, uh, the, uh, so the pyramid, S-I-E-R, is, is really the, there, there are three things that are critically important. The SIER model is critical. If you don't fully sense, you have nothing to interpret appropriately. If you don't fully sense and thus don't fully interpret what the other party is saying, you have nothing to evaluate. And if you don't evaluate properly, you have no opportunity to respond to the other individual's uh, uh, issues and problems and so forth. So sensing is the initial most important aspect, which 
most of us move on too fast from there. Interpretation, of course, is simply what does the other party mean? Uh, and, and how is the other party's interpretation of X, Y, or Z uh, meaningful if we're going to move up to the evaluation level? Sometimes we're too busy interpreting what the other party is saying through our filters and our eyes. Uh, so interpretation is, is critically important, but it's the second level of the house of listening. Evaluation, by the way, evaluation in some cases is inappropriate. I'll come back to that. But eventually, what are we listening to as we evaluate? Is it a fact or is it opinion? Is it uh, warranted? Is it unwarranted? Is it, uh, e that's where we evaluate what the other party is, is really saying. But you can't do that well if you haven't sensed, obviously, if you haven't interpreted uh, correctly, uh, evaluation falls away. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a lot of individuals are real focused on responding uh, at the R level. But if you failed at the S level, you'll fail at all the higher levels. If you uh, succeed at S but fail at I interpretation, you'll fail at the higher levels. Same with evaluation. And ultimately, obviously, same at responding. There's one other thing I, uh, that, that's critical to all of this. Uh, in, uh, and, and this is all in the Listening Leaders book. Uh, and it's the great listeners that we find are the ones who are very, very skilled at identifying the purposes or the intent, if you will, of the messages that we listen to. And uh, what we know is, is that, again, a nice little pyramid, we know that speakers speak for reasons or for purposes of what we call phatic communication. That's P-H-A-T-I-C, phatic communication, which is the chit chat or small talk of life. I don't know if you ever read a book by uh, Mike, uh, uh, Abershoff. Uh, he was in the Navy. He was a, he, he had the worst performing ship in the Navy. And uh, he spent time with 300 and I don't know, 375 of his shipmates that he was leading, sat down with each and every one of them over a period of a year and got to know them, ask them questions about uh, somebody was going to leave the Navy. And uh, he said, why are you leaving? And the young man said, well, because nobody asked me to stay. And uh, so he said, well, tell me more about you. And what flowed from that was uh, the fatty chit chat, small talk, binding communication, because uh, Abershoff listened carefully. And uh, he then interviewed in a phatic fashion every individual on that ship over a period of time. And they became one of the best uh, performing ships in the United States Navy. He's written uh, two or three books about it's your ship. Uh, and uh, I recommend it to your listeners. I, I, um, I, I second that, Manny. I'm listening to it on, on Audible right now. Uh, the Benford, the USS Benford is the ship. That's right. That's Great right. book. I mean, if accountability is your topic, this book is for you. And 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 if listening is is uh, your focus, that book is for you because he's got a great story in there about uh, uh, his gunnery crew and how after he got to know everybody uh, on the ship really well, he realized that uh, the best thing to do is to give them a challenge and let them run with it, which they did, and became better than the admiral who had boasted about how he had, uh, when, when he was leading men, <laughs> at that time, all men. Uh, so all he did was uh, listen carefully and posted the uh, admiral's uh, uh, his email. letter to him and yeah. put it on his email and posted it on the... Uh, <laughs> 
gunnery stations. <laughs> Didn't have to say a thing. Just printed it off and posted it. And yeah, yeah, that's, said, a, that's like the old story about uh, Andrew Carnegie, who came in and, and uh, asked the group how many products they had produced, and he wrote it on the floor. And the next group said, uh, "What? what's that number? He said, well, that Mr. Carnegie came in, and said, that's how many we produced this shift. And then, and that next shift wiped it out and did a better number. And the next shift came back and did a better number. And he didn't have to motivate anybody. He just wrote the okay. number down. So, so we go, you know, we just go back to uh, the beginning point of the pyramid. Uh, uh, FATIC is, is critically important. And a lot of people in sales, a lot of people in leadership, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people in all walks of life do not spend a lot of time engaging in the chit chat or small talk of life. In fact, there are some fields where I've heard it over and over and over for the last 64 years. Uh, professionals have told me, well, that's, that's not me. That's not my area. That's not uh, important. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, we do a lot of personality assessment uh, profiling work with very deep stuff. And, and there's a category of individuals who do do not engage uh mm. in fatic they're not built that way but they can create skills in that area the next level up is catharsis and that's simply listening to people dump their bucket mm. it's amazing to me how a lot of people uh basically say look i don't have time to listen to your problems or your issues but people have a great need to unload and dump their bucket and uh, uh, e emotional uh, relief and, and so forth. And listeners who, who serve that need uh, will profit immensely. Obviously, the third level up is uh, information. And that's all we're talking about is information. Uh, I've got a problem. Let me tell you what my problem is. Da, 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 da. And then the next level up is uh, persuasion. So if you take a look at the purposes of communication, the really skilled listeners, no matter what their position or station level, whatever, the really skilled listeners we find are the ones who can identify very quickly by listening to the other individual in terms of whether they're listening to fatty, cathartic, information or persuasive uh, messages and then mm -hmm. adapt accordingly. So we deal so much with salespeople on this show and we get a lot of questions from them. Uh, one of the issues I find so often with salespeople is that they, they don't listen to learn. They tend to listen so they can respond quickly. Uh, if they listen at all, uh, mostly they, they want to get in there and start telling so how can we help salespeople understand the importance of really listening for those issues that you, you talked about that customers or other people might have rather than just trying to, to get their own thoughts out to the, in the interview process? Well, the three things I've already talked about, uh, you know, the SIER model is critically important. The purposes model is critically important. The weight concept is critically important. Uh, the uh, uh, the whole attitude and uh, and the skills knowledge model is all uh, pertinent. Uh, all of this stuff weaves together when you when you think about it. Uh, I heard uh, somebody. I think it was uh, uh, John Wooden, the great basketball coach. Uh, uh, he had a great quotation and something that was written about him. Uh, he said, uh, be quick, but never hurry. And, uh, I thought to myself, be quick, but never hurry. It sounds, uh, contradictory, mm -hmm. but in a sense, if you have the, 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 the models and the flow, uh, you don't, ha you don't have to hurry. Uh, so I constantly think in terms of uh, the ASK model, uh, the SIER model, the purposes model, uh, the emotional control issues, uh, and uh, recognize that, that the uh, uh, responsibility ultimately 
lies within within you, me, uh, anybody that we're dealing with. Uh, I have a little concept of years ago called the minimum 51% responsibility question. And by the way, this is all based on research that we went out and asked literally thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people, a simple question, by the way, in all walks. Uh, and the question was, who holds the predominant responsibility for, for effective communication? Uh, and by minimum responsibility, we meant 51% or greater. The larger number of, of uh, responses were uh, people thought it was the, on the sender. So if you have salespeople or people in leadership and sales who uh, think that the responsibility lies with the sender, uh, hey, your salesman go out and, and explain our process, our product, whatever, mm -hmm. then they're going to speak more than they listen. Uh, there were a, a smaller group out of all the thousands of people who said it's, it's the uh, uh, listener, it's the receiver. So you had that whole sender receiver question. Uh, our position that we trained and uh, uh, helped people understand was uh, the, fifth, the minimum 51% responsibility or more resides with the individual. It resides with me. Mm. If I'm, uh, whether I'm a sender or a receiver, and all of a sudden that flattens out the, uh, the playing field in a way. Uh, so if I walk into a uh, issue because a client has called me and said, hey, we've got a problem, I'm going to focus on the receiving end of that communication. And by the way, that's it's like playing tennis or pickleball nowadays, back and forth, back and forth. But, but. I think that the responsibility, the minimum responsibility resides with the individual, whether it is uh, fatty, cathartic, informational, or persuasive. Great, great stuff, um, Manny. Uh, re very relevant in today's marketplace. Um, I, I, I love the, the S-E-I-R, and you, know, you and I have talked a little bit about this on how sometimes the E on evaluating ends up being the J in judgment. And, and the R in response ends up being the R in react. And it seems like the, the formula that you have can really keep us all on track and really listen with the interpretation, the evaluation, and the response versus the judgment and the reaction. Um, we need to start wrapping it up. I really want to encourage everybody. And when you go to the show notes at winningatselling.com, there will be a link to Manny's book. You can get it on Amazon. I highly recommend it. It's 353 pages. This is by no means a pamphlet when it comes to listening. <laughs> and it is going to add a lot of knowledge base when it comes to sales. And I can't stress enough how important listening is. And I'm really grateful that Manny joined us today. Thanks, Manny, for, for sharing some of your wisdom with our listeners. Thank you. Hats off to what you're doing. Yeah, Thank terrific, you. Manny. Thanks so much. All right. As we wrap up today, uh, we want to go into our golden nugget. And uh, I think this one is appropriate. This is from Larry King. I never learned anything while I was talking. And we do have a resource on our show notes at winningatselling.com. This is episode 539. Bill has a video on the best questions. So go out and um, visit our, our website at winningatselling.com. And then next week, uh, we're going to go back to our book club, The Theory of Accountability, Part 2, chapters at least 6, 7, 8, maybe chapter 9. And our topic is going to be the opposite of listening, stretching the truth, which some people might call lying. Oh so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how salespeople respond to that. Go out and get better one skill at a time. Joyful selling. Joyful selling.